Hello everyone and welcome to part two of Lawrence Tries to Get Some Naquium Running. <laughs> yes, this is Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and I'm still working on getting a decent Naquium supply up and running for my, uh, for, for my space station in order to make more and more advanced space sciences. So if we take a look out at Realm of Shadows, this is where I'm doing my Naquium mining. We have this system set up here where a spaceship can drop in and then the spaceship has these big thermal batteries on it. These, the, yeah, I'm using the beam receivers as essentially as a big thermal battery and it can then produce a certain amount of power from that which will then power the, um, power the entire area. So we've got this little mining area over here that I built up before and I've expanded out down here. There's another Naquium patch down here so I've grabbed this one and, we're, uh, and we can do some mining down here as well. And each of the, all of these Naquim mines require the sulfuric, a sulfuric acid supply in order to mine, in much the same way that uranium does in vanilla. And so in order to get that, I've got my spaceship that flies out here, brings with it a supply of both sulfur and, and uh, iron plates. In order, and then we're mining water up here on, the, on this planet from this um, little, little ice field out here, melting that into water, and then turning it into sulfuric acid here. So... The system is fairly self-contained. The theory is that when the spaceship comes out, it brings enough um, sulfur and enough iron with it to, to, to make enough sulfuric acid to mine a spaceship's worth of, um, of naquitite. And um, at the moment, I've got it deliberately bringing out a bit more than it actually needs, with the intention that these that we'll get a bit of a buffer building up in these warehouses. And then after the ships have been quite a few times I'll lower it down to what I estimate the actual amount will be and then try and remember to keep an eye on it so we don't run out of either of those either of those and there's always enough to make sure I, I, I do enough mining. So the uh, Naquatite gets mined out of the ground or out of the asteroids rather comes along here flows into these warehouses the warehouses will in theory fill up gradually with the uh, with the Naquatite as you can see they're all actually empty at the moment and that's because the amount that um, is because basically the ship sits here waiting for the mining to be done and then as soon as enough has been done it'll fly off um it's not a fast the mining isn't a fast enough process to actually build up a supply here <clears throat> now what would be quite nice would be to have a system that builds up where, the, where there's a bit of a bit of power stored here so that the mining can carry on and there'll be some in these in these uh, warehouses when the spaceship arrives so that it can just land load up and fly off immediately but that's not really practical unfortunately because of the um because because of the way I'm powering it and that is a bit of a limitation but it's one I'm I'm going to live with for now and see how it goes so we have the spaceship and this is currently on its on its way somewhere let's have a look where 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 is it currently going it's on its way to to, uh, back out to Realm of Shadows. Oh yes, we've got we've got some empty empty warehouses here. We've got a warehouse here with that bit of iron and sulfur in it that I mentioned, and it's uh, and it's so it's on its way out. And we've got these shields up, protecting the ship reasonably well. Um, I did have a rather unfortunate moment a little while ago where um, a rock managed to get through these past these shields and impacted. I think it was on one of these sort of bottom corners down here. So I put in some extra lasers down there that will and, and up the side as well that will ho hopefully be enough to deflect any any rocks that are coming in at such an angle that they get past the shields and hit the side of the ship. So the rescue mission, I end up having to go out in my personal one of these spaceships with loads and loads of iron engines on the back and essentially flew out to the spaceship hopped out of my spaceship went over did the repairs and then um, and then the ship started moving again immediately which was very funny for everyone watching because I nearly well it felt like I nearly got left abandoned in space but I had to quickly scramble to get on board this ship and then fly it back to my ship in order to get back on it in order to get back on my my personal ship and fly back back home again which is all a little bit silly but um hopefully it won't happen again quite like that <laughs> so but in theory that is that is in fact working so there are, um at the other end all of that then gets brought to Norvis orbit where it gets unloaded here into these warehouses and then there's a second ship that comes in here and will load up with the naquatite on this side and then fly off to Tulip. On was that it? No, that wasn't it. <clears throat> on Tulip, it then lands here. The Naquatite unloads, flows down this belt here into a storage warehouse, and then flows through this system here, which I talked about last time, where we're basically we we're, it's, it's a standard ore, ore processing facilities that we've used many times before for many different sorts of ores. We're crushing it, we're washing it. We're compacting it into, uh, we're turning it into powder, and then we're compacting that powder into ingots, 
the ingots flow into the warehouse, get loaded onto the spaceship, and the spaceship flies back again. It's, it's all quite straightforward. The, I'm not going to call it a problem because it's it's well, it's sort of it's a thing. The um, the Naquatite processing is incredibly inefficient. So we put it also it only the Naquatite ore only stacks up to ten. So you don't get you don't get to bring all that much of it here down here. It means we can bring a total of about five thousand down here in the, in the spaceship because it's got one I think it's got one warehouse on it. So we get 5,000 down here. It goes through the processing. And oop, there it is. So here it is with its five, just over 5,000. So it pours out of here. And then I've worked, I've done the maths. And it turns out that if you multiply through with all of the all of the steps going through here, even including all of the uh, productivity modules I've put in there. Actually, I can't remember. Uh, you get out about an 80th of the amount you put in. So for every 80 Naquatite that go in at the bottom here, Processes it through, it crushes it, it washes it, it powders it, and then it's up here. It eventually puts it, it puts it into one of these machines, and eventually you'll get up to the the ten that's needed to make it to make an actual um, ingot of, of uh, naquium. And that's that is an 80 to one ratio. So for every 5,000 that come in, you get something like um, a bit more than 50 out, but uh, not enormously more. I think that 80 to 1 is probably without the productivity modules though. So with the productivity modules I put in here, it's a little bit better than that. Maybe it's sort of 50 to 1 or 40 to, or something like that. But it's still, it's, it's not very good. We're not making a huge amount of Naquatite. So over here, I've set this spaceship to take off when it gets to 135. So that's the amount I expect to get out of an entire load of Naquium. Which is kind of pathetic to be honest. It's, it's not a lot. Um, over here, so you see, we're, we've got a lot of this to unload. It unloads really, really quickly um, because the stack sizes are so small. But then, as it comes back around again, we're not actually getting all that much um, naqu naquium ingot into here. Now, it's just occurred to me to wonder whether I'm um, whether I'm checking to make sure this is emptied before it um, before it takes off again because that would be rather unfortunate. Uh, that said, that said. Um, oh, I see. It's getting unloaded onto onto here as well, right? Yes. So the knack, yeah, it comes in, it gets on, it gets unloaded, and it'll be put onto this belt here. So uh, for for shipping out to the other end. So we will actually, yeah, we're not, we don't have to worry about it ending up. So Nacrotite comes in, gets loaded into the warehouse, unloaded, ready to put onto this belt to be unloaded at the other end, and it sits here. And at the moment, we've still got a bit more coming through, so we haven't actually even filled up these belts yet because it's so such a slow process. But eventually. All of this naquium will be processed, be loaded back into here, and the ship will take off, bring it back to orbit, and then we can do interesting stuff with it. Now, I haven't actually done any interesting stuff with it yet. All that happens to it is it gets dropped off, it goes down into this warehouse down here, where we've managed to make a whole 884 so far. And at the rate it's going, that feels quite impressive. But we do need to do a bit more than that to make it into science. So I've started having a bit of a look at the um, at the space science packs. Let's have a look at the catalog. Catalog one. So for this one, you need to do all of these. Which well, this one actually this one only requires um, nanomaterials, so that's fairly um, fairly cheap. There's a lot of junk that comes out the other side though, so that's going to be a bit of a challenge to deal with. Um, that's going to probably be the hardest part, getting rid of all of this junk. Um, energy data requires naquium ingots. So this one's going to be hard because it's going to be expensive. Lots and lots of naquium. This one also requires a bit of naquium as well and some lube. So again, only difficult because of the naquium required. Now, interstellar void probe data is another one of those where you have a a um, probe rocket launch facility that you sit somewhere out in an appropriate place. So we've got one out in solar orbit, we've got one in the asteroid belt, and now we need to have one somewhere out in the interstellar void in order to do these ones. To get um, so that's an, another thing that I've added, and, and I've actually added that to my. Um, spaceship that flies out to Realm of Shadows. So on here you can see somewhere, where is it? Um, okay, so we've got we've got a, um, a strong box here to load to load some science packs into. There's supposed to be a, a chest on here somewhere. I, don't, I can't remember where I put it though. <laughs> I can't see it because it's dark. Um, oh, here it is, right. So this chest is supposed to be requesting these things from Norvis orbit. So the idea is it lands in Norvis orbit up here and then there's this box here that has 
a load of the um, satellites, oh, sorry, space probes, and a load of the probe rockets in it. And so those should be automatically loaded onto the spaceship by um, by logistics bots. And I've got a a, 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 um, a bot, a roboport here that appears to not have any robots in it. So that might explain why there aren't any in at the other end. That's going to be something I'll need to fix. It then loads them onto the spaceship, and then when it gets to the spaceship, gets to Realm of Shadows, we've got another robot port here that will unlo unload them, put them into this box here. They will then get launched, the satellites will get launched, and then we can dump the, um, the data cards out here. They'll go back, flow around here, and they'll flow into the spaceship. Now, I think the spaceship is going to be doing a lot more transporting of um, thingy, this stuff, uh, Naquitite. Than it is than it is the, um, the the card. So I've not bothered to set the spaceship up to watch for exactly how many data cards are on it. But I think this basic system should work. And then, as usual, once we get back to Norbit orbit, we can unload them here. I haven't put in an unloading system for those yet, but it'll be about here somewhere, I think. And we'll put them on, to, and then we'll get there. And then we'll run them down and put them onto a train, along with everything else that's putting being put onto trains down here. Maybe maybe I'll use this station. We'll see. So I'm making some progress there. Um, there are all of these things that are required for deep space science, and the Naquium is being made, but slowly. Um, I'm going to need to have a look and find out where the um, where the bottlenecks are with that. And it seems that we have, well, I, I was going to say we have a decent amount here. We don't have that much here. I think the I think the bottleneck, to be honest, is just everywhere. I'm going to need more. I'm going to need another spaceship for doing these shuttle runs, and another one for doing the long distance out to um, out to Realm of Shadow run. But that's to come. I think I've made some good progress there. The other thing I've been working on is out in um, Kalidus orbit, I've put in some additional um, beam things. So I've worked out that down on um, Norvis, which is where this, this one is, this one's firing at Norvis, yes. Um, we, do, we only actually need two we only actually need two gigawatts of power to be sent in order to power everything on Norvis um, because of all the solar panels it's got. Let's just check if that's still true. Yes, this is still basically at 10,000 degrees C, so we are we're absolutely fine for um, for heat down here. This is nice and toasty, um, and being held held at, at, at its maximum by the beam. We've got this single one here. This is probably firing Myokin. Yes, Myokin is it doesn't need all that much power. So here, as you can see, the uh, temperature is it's about just over 6,000, <clears throat> but it's going gradually upwards. So that one gigawatt is enough power for um, for Myokin because there's not very much happening there. I've then got this one over here, which is doing four gigawatts, crazy, crazy amounts. But I'm doing, I'm firing that much power because I want that to recharge my spaceships, and so I want that to be able to happen fairly quickly. And and so when a spaceship lands, I can go, aha, this one's getting a bit chilly. Let's fire the beam at it quickly and get that one, get it running. It's also going to be my emergency system in case a spaceship ever gets run, it runs out of it runs out of heat in deep space. And at the moment. I don't have an automated way of heating up the Naquatite spaceship and making sure that it doesn't run out of power. So that's a bit manual, and I don't like things that are a bit manual in Factorio because I always forget to do them. So I'm hoping that I will find a better way reasonably quickly. But unfortunately, you can't have these beams tracking moving spaceships or zapping a spaceship when it arrives, as far as I'm aware. And then I've got another two gigawatt here, two gigawatt one here that I haven't actually um, started using yet, because because I haven't got anywhere that I need need it to be used for. Although I am planning, to, I think I'm probably going to use this on Tulip because Tulip uses quite a lot of power and is currently running off um, uranium that's imported from Norvis, and I'm running very very short on uranium. So having anything that works make, makes that work better would be rather nice. In order to get all of this working, I needed to extend this solar field, and um, notice the rather obvious mistake here. Yes, these um, the, these pylons were put in one square to or one block too far to the left. They should be here, which would mean they'd be able to link to these, and therefore the whole system would work. As it is, the whole system doesn't work because there's a gap in the cable, so all of these solar panels are just simply not being used, which is a complete and utter waste of space. So, yeah, oops. But I'll, I'll head out at some point and fix that. It's, at least it's a trivial fix to do. I'll either move these pylons across or I'll put in an extra step, something down at the bottom here to, to, pa to pass the power over. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's try not to fail like that in the future. 
The other part of doing this, so making these things the first time round was a bit of an effort because I had to, I was doing it on the old style um, building system in, in Norbit Orbit. <clears throat> I've now upgraded that. So we have down here, we, ha we have the bits and pieces that are required in order to make the beam everything. So we've got um, an emitter here, we've got the chamber here, and we've got the zapper, what are these things called? Injector, chamber, chamber, and emitter there. Now, I probably should, oh, and we've got the receiver there. So all, all four parts of a beam system are now being made up here in orbit. And the reason I put these in a vertical column like this is because I noticed they, the, the parts they require are almost the same for all three of them. So you notice we've got blue circuits, superconductive cables, aeroframe bulkers, heavy girders, and glass. And this one is all a, a subset of that, as is this one. So there's no point in having them all out next to each other. I might as well put them in a column like this just to save space so that I don't need to extend this bus quite as far and have quite so much resource tied up on the bus. Also, making these things requires crazy amounts of something. Like, look at that, that's 200 superconductive cables to make one of these, um, which is why I ended up turning this, this insert around so it would stop putting them in. Uh, let's put it back now so we can actually start making them again and get it up to the number, or number I want to have. But that also meant I put in these additional machines down here for making the superconductive cables because it's a really, really slow process. It takes, what is it, 30 seconds? Yeah, 30 seconds to make one. Uh, when you consider that um, the normal copper cables are made at about four per second, this is quite a difference. So I, I filled them all up with speed modules and I put in a beacon here with more speed modules and some efficiency modules as well just to try and get this to go a little bit faster. And even with that, I still needed all of these just to make it not too painful. As you can see, I've started these two machines running again. Um, they're inserting cables as fast as they can. And yeah, these machines are barely... Oh, yeah, in fact, this, 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 this line of them here is getting steadily shorter. We now have all of these machines running and it's still shrinking quickly. So yeah, this is, this is a very, very slow process, but... You know what can you what can you do? I need I need the cables, um, and so I just put in lots and lots of machines and lots and lots of speed modules, <laughs> and it it basically works. And I think once this gets up to having the right number, because all of these output things are set to so I want to have at least five, and we currently have none apparently, which is interesting. Um, here we're supposed to be having at least ten, and we've got five. Here we're supposed to be having at least twenty. And we've got none. So, why, why is this one not running? No glass. Okay, so we're having glass supply shortages as well. So that's going to be something else to worry about later. But yeah, lots going on. <laughs> and half of it isn't working as well as I would like it to. Speaking of modules, I've also started um, here. I've started making some more of the um, tier 6 uh, productivity modules and if you remember the diagrams I've put up before yes here we go it takes an enormous quantity of things to make a tier, a tier 6 productivity module because to make one tier 6 module you need three tier 3 modules three tier 5 modules and some extra stuff to make the tier 5 module you require three tier 4 modules to, requ to make a tier 4 module you require three tier 3 modules to make a three tier three, you require three tier two. To make a tier two, you require three tier what? Three tier ones, and to make and all kinds of extra bits and pieces in there as well. So it adds up very, very, or multiplies up very, very quickly. To make one tier, um, to, to make one tier six module, requires three to the power five six um, tier one modules, which is a large number that I'll put on screen now, so I don't have to try and work it out in my head. Um, and that's a big deal. Now, I am making the tier 3 modules down on Norvis, and I'm, I'm probably not even using productivity modules, so it won't let me because they're, they're, they're probably not considered a, an, a, a thing, that you, an intermediate product. But I've got them being brought up by Rocket. We're then putting them in here by, by a Logistics Bot, and building up and building up and building up, and eventually we'll get the tier 6 modules coming out here. And I've got 45 of them so far, which is a start, because my plan is to go back over to Tulip with those, at some point and it's a bit dark and if I come in here and if I re I've worked out if I replace all the, the uh, productivity modules in this step and this step with the tier 6 ones that'll get me the biggest bang for buck because there are the fewest of those machines doing the doing the work so and then probably this one next as well so it, it's 
because of the way um, maths works, <laughs> um, an extra five or an extra ten percent at um, at this stage is exactly the same as an extra ten percent at this stage or this stage or this stage. It doesn't matter where you put your extra productivity modules in. However, at this stage and this stage, there are only one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven machines taking one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, taking four or five productivity modules. So if I go in and upgrade the, these ones first and then these ones, then that'll get me as much productivity gain as I would get by upgrading. It'll get me more productivity gain, actually, because there's more modules in it. But per module, it'll get me more productivity gain from doing this one than it would from doing this one over here, but all of this, because there are more machines. And so if I upgrade a module in here, a fifth of, or if I upgrade all of these by with one module, then I require five to affect the entire throughput of Naquitite. If I upgrade these, then I require, I don't know how many there are here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's about 30 or 40 of these anyway. So I'd require that many, 40, to affect the, the whole whole production line by one. Now another thing I could do, because there's so much lag and idle time on this system, I could consider coming in here and saying actually only use one or two of each of the machines at each step. Um, but I don't think I want to because the spaceship is arriving and then waiting here until it's got the full load through. So I want it to run as quickly as possible while the spaceship is there and then just sit idle. Um, so I'm not going. So yeah, I'm first. I'm going to upgrade all of these. Then I'm going to upgrade all of these. Then I suppose all of these. And then when I've finally got enough, I might consider doing these ones as well. But it's that's going to be a lot more expensive. So I'm 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 a, I'm a little bit loath to do that. It has also been pointed out, and I forgot about this completely, that I should be able to go out to Realm of Shadows with a massive quantity of um, uh, what do you call it? Um, productivity modules and load all of the mining drills up with them. Um, now that will get me more naquitite out of the ground, out of these patches before they run out, but it will slow the process down. So it's already a pretty slow process. I'm slightly loath to do that, but it might it might be worth it just to get because well, how big are these patches? We've got we've got 2.8 million there, and we've got 4.2 there. So we've got I, I mean 7 million is quite a lot of naquitite. It's going to last a long time, especially given how slowly it actually gets met dug up. So I think I probably won't do that yet, but it's something I may consider in the future. So as you can see here with the system working, we've got the mining drills running. They're producing Nacrotite at a relatively slow rate. It's going into the spaceship here and then it loads up the first warehouse, then it loads up the second warehouse, then it loads up the third warehouse. And this is the warehouse that had the, um, the, the iron and the sulfur in it. That has all been dumped out well before the Nacrotite starts to flow in. So there's no worry there about there being... Um, about there being a collision between those, as long as I make sure that the uh, the warehouses down here don't fill up. And at the moment we've got 6,000 in each, that's fine, we're using up like, well actually we're using about 20% of that one, so maybe I should consider lowering the amount of sulphur I bring out fairly soon. But it's all going fine for the time being. Right, so that's what I've been up to. I've been getting the Naquitite running a bit better and I've been working on solar power. There we go, there's a sort of a 10 word summary of the entire episode. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Don't forget to uh, check out the rest of the channel. Um, there'll be another one of these videos next Friday. Um, I, I hope there should be. Um, because I'll, I'll have done some more by then. Because if you come back a lot back on Tuesday evening, there'll be a stream there where I'll be working on um, working on building all of this stuff up and, uh, and expanding everything out and, and probably fixing some of the problems I've been talking about in this episode. So come along and join me then. It gives you a chance to sort of join in the chat and uh, let me know what you'd do differently if you think I'm making any horrific mistakes, that sort of thing. It's good, and it's nice to have people to talk to while I'm playing. On Thursdays, well, we've... Um, we're, we, we've finished Industrial Revolution now, so we're going to be starting a Minecraft Dungeons and Dragons and Space Shuttles run at some point, which is going to uh, same same group of us with a, with a couple of extra people. Um, we're going to so we're going to be going out and and that that mod pack is going to make Minecraft a bit more a bit more Factorio like. So rather than going out and building big castles and things like that, we're going to be going out and um, and, and, and building up industrial systems uh things with, with, with there'll be there'll be belts there'll be pulleys there'll be machines there'll be uh flow diagrams they'll be working through um systems of, of making stuff so it'll be it'll be a bit like um fa factorio but in a sort of 3d blocky minecrafty way uh so i think that'll be um hopefully that'll appeal to all, all of you as well and you'll you'll come along and join me for that <clears throat> 
Um, Sundays are of course the GTA videos, those are coming out every week for the foreseeable future where um, my friends chase me around the city and usually try and kill me and to be honest frequently succeed so um, yeah that's uh, <laughs> but it's good fun, it's, it's, it, it can be nice and tense and, and quite exciting. And on, on every other Saturday I'm also trying to release some uh, real life videos so those will be things like uh, car mods or car introductions or stuff like that or some DIY stuff so at the moment I'm releasing some videos about a, um, a spice rack I made for my sister as a Christmas present so if you're, if you're interested in seeing me uh, messing around with, with, uh, with power tools come along and have a, have a watch of those videos. So alright, uh, so that's my channel. Thank you very much for watching, I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.